Hello friends, welcome to the new session of the reproduction in lower and higher plants. Now we have to discuss about the pollen pistil interaction. So what is a pollen pistil interaction? We know the pollination occurs and when the pollination occurs, it transfers the pollen grains from anther to the stigma of the flower. So pistil is the gynoecium or it is the female reproductive part of the flower. So all the events from the deposition of the pollen grain on the stigma to the entry of pollen tube in the ovule is considered as the pollen pistil interaction. So the pollen pistil interactions are the events from the deposition of the pollen grain over the stigma, then the formation of pollen tube, then the, the pollen tube is attracted by the synergids and through one of the synergid pollen tube enters into the ovule and performs the process of fertilization. So all these events are called as the pollen pistil interaction. Right. So pollination transfers the pollen grain from anther to the stigma of the flower. But pollination does not guarantee the transfer of the right type or the compatible pollen grain over the stigma. So what is the right type or the compatible type of pollen grain? The pollen grain from the same species is called as the right type or the compatible type of pollen grain. But during the cross pollination, wrong type of pollen grain or the pollen grain from the another species is also transferred over the stigma. So if the pollen grain from the another species is transferred over the stigma, this type of pollen grain can be considered as incompatible or the wrong type of pollen grain. This wrong type of pollen grain cannot get germinated over the stigma. Why? Because the pistil has the ability to recognize the right type of the pollen grain means the pollen grain from the same species. So pistil, pistil recognizes the right type of pollen grain and this compatible or the right type of pollen grain absorb nutrients from the stigmatic surface. So stigma have the sticky secretions and from the sticky secretions the water and the nutrient are absorbed by this pollen grain and this pollen grain when absorbed water and nutrient its cytoplasmic content get increased and as its cytoplasmic content get increased the pollen tube comes out through one of the germ pore. Remember in last lecture or um, in previous lecture we have studied about the pollen grain and we have studied that the pollen grain have the germ pores over them through one of the germ pore the pollen tube that is the cytoplasmic content along with the intine comes out and this is called as the pollen tube so this pollen tube at its tip have the tube nucleus then it also has the cytoplasm and it also has the two male nucleus or the two male nuclei in them. So this pollen tube has the tube nucleus at its tip and this tube nucleus is attracted by the synergids which are present in the embryo sac of the ovule. So the synergids attract the pollen tube because synergids have the filiform apparatus this filiform apparatus are the hair like cells uh, which are present in the synergids or these hair, hair like structures present in the synergids they attract the pollen tube and then the pollen tube moves towards the synergids so all these interactions are called as the pollen pistil interaction so the compatible pollen grain absorb water and nutrient and germinates to form the pollen tube and the tip of the pollen tube enters through one of the synergids because this tip of the pollen tube has a tube nucleus. This tube nucleus is at it absorbs the water from the synergids and it bursts over the synergid and it uh, this pollen tube it enters into the ovule, right? So when the pollen tube enters into the ovule, these two male gametes they also enter into the ovule so all these interactions are called as the pollen pistil interaction we can also germinate the pollen grain inside the test tube so in vitro pollen germination can be induced by using the sucrose solution so we can use the sucrose solution if we have to germinate the pollen grain inside the test tube 
we can also add the boric acid into that so addition of boric acid facilitates and the ac and accelerates the process of the pollen germination means the formation of the pollen tube so all these interactions are considered as the pollen pistil interaction so all the events from the deposition of the pollen grain on the stigma to the entry of the pollen tube through one of the synergid can be considered as the pollen pistil interaction we can also perform the artificial hybridization method for formation of the hybrid seeds so how the hybrid seeds are formed in the artificial hybridization process desired pollen grains are hand pollinated or these are dusted and these are used for fertilization so what is the artificial hybridization so please remember in the artificial hybridization we require two plants two different plants of the same species these two different plants of the same species are grown and they have the flowers right so these flowers when they are present in a bud condition the pollen grain from one of the flower or the anther from one of the flower are removed by using the forceps so anther from one of the flower is uh, removed by using the forceps and this process is called as emasculation we call it as emasculation so in artificial hybridization we select the two different plants these two different plants will bear flowers one plant is considered as the female plant and another plant is considered as the male plant in the female plant the emasculation is performed so in the bud condition the anthers are removed by using the forceps so these bud will have only the gynoecium in it and this process of removal of the anther by using the forceps is called as the emasculation right so this bud will have the gynoecium only so when this bud will open this open bud will have only the gynoecium this another male flower will have the anther over it it can also have the stigma right so anther from this male flowers are taken these are collected and these are dusted over the stigma of the female flower so from the anther of the male flower the pollen grains are transferred over the stigma of the female flower and then these flower these flowers are wrapped by using the plastic right this method is called as the bagging so bagging is the method in which a bag is used to cover the flower so that another pollen grains do not uh, get transferred over the flower right so this is called as bagging so emasculation bagging can be performed in the artificial hybridization we can also provide a tag to this this is called as a tagging so this tag will have the information of the uh, date of the pollination and which uh, type of pollen grain or pollen grain from which plant is transferred over the stigma so all this information is present over the tag and this is called as the tagging so bagging tagging and emasculation is performed in the artificial hybridization as we have covered this flower by a bag no other pollen grain can fertilize this stigma of the flower and here the seeds will be produced and this seeds will be produced by the process of the cross pollination or the artificial hybridization let us study about the double fertilization double fertilization is the characteristic feature of the angiosperms it was first discovered by the navashi in the plants like the lilium and the fritillaria when the pollen grains are transferred over the stigma the nutrient present over the stigma as well as the water is absorbed by the pollen grain and the cytoplasmic content of the pollen grain is increased this increased cytoplasmic content comes out through one of the germ pore along with the entine and we call it as the pollen tube so this pollen tube it has 
the tube nucleus at its tip and this tube nucleus is attracted by the filiform apparatus of the synergids. Pollen tube also has the two non-motile male gametes in them. This pollen tube is passed through pollen tube is passed through the style and it is attracted by the synergids. So when the pollen tube reaches towards the synergids, the tip of the pollen tube absorbs water from the from one of the synergids and get burst here. So when the pollen tube get burst, the cytoplasmic content of the pollen tube get released inside the embryo sac. So this structure is representing the embryo sac and these two cells are representing the synergids. When the cytoplasmic content from the pollen tube is released inside the embryo sac, the two non-motile male gametes are also released inside the embryo sac. The first non-motile male gamete fuses with the female gamete which is also called as the egg. Right? So inside the embryo sac, the seven cells are present. Out of these seven cells, the three cells are present at this micropylar end. These two cells are called as synergids and middle cell is called as the egg cell or the female gamete, right? So this female, female gamete or the egg cell is fertilized by one of the male gamete. So when this fertilization occurs, it is called as the first fertilization or it is also called as the syngamy. So remember, syngamy is also called as the first fertilization. This first fertilization is responsible for the formation of the zygote. So zygote is formed here and zygote develops into an embryo. So the diploid zygote is formed by the first fertilization which is also called as the syngamy. First fertilization is the fertilization between the first male gamete and the female gamete that is the egg cell. Second male gamete fertilizes the secondary nucleus. Here the secondary nucleus is present. Secondary nucleus has the two polar nuclei in them. Here you can observe they have the two polar nuclei. Second male gamete fertilizes the secondary nucleus and here the three nuclei fuse together. So here the three nuclei they fuse together and they form a single nucleus which is a triploid nucleus. So this cell which is formed is called as the primary endosperm nucleus. Please remember it is called as the primary endosperm nucleus that is the PEN pen, right? So this primary endosperm nucleus which is formed by the fertilization of the uh, one of the male gamete and the polar nuclei forms a triploid primary endosperm nucleus. This triploid primary endosperm nucleus later on develops into the triploid endosperm. So it later on develop into the triploid endosperm. This fertilization is the second fertilization, right? So as the two fertilization occurs, it is called as the double fertilization and second fertilization result in the formation of the primary endosperm nucleus, which finally develops into an endosperm. Remember, the function of the endosperm is to provide nutrients, uh, nutrition to the developing embryo so zygote which is a diploid zygote diploid zygote develop into an embryo and this embryo is provided uh, in, uh, provided with nutrition by the triploid endosperm right so this double fertilization is the characteristic feature of the angiosperms these remaining cells which are present at the chalazal end are called as the these are called as the antipodal cells this we already have studied right so these antipodal cells are not involved in any kind of fertilization. So their role is not uh, known yet, right? So antipodal cells are degenerated after fertilization. Synergids are also degenerated after the fertilization. Zygote develops into an embryo and 
this primary endosperm nucleus develop into an endosperm right so the pollen tube it passes through the style and it fertilizes the cells of the embryo sac right and two fertilization occur so we call it as the double fertilization this pollen tube normally enters through the micropylar end so this end is called as micropylar end if the pollen tube enters through the micropyle then it is called as the porogamy remember please remember that if the pollen tube enters through the micropylar end it is called as the porogamy but sometimes the chalaza is also broken so sometimes the pollen tube can also enter through the chalaza right so pollen tube can enter through the chalaza also so if the pollen grain pollen tube enters through the chalaza it is called as the chalazogamy or sometimes the integuments which are the covering over the embryo sac or the covering of the ovule they are also broken then the pollen tube can also enter through the integuments also so when the pollen tube enters through the integuments we call it as the mesogamy so please remember porogamy is the entry of the pollen tube through the micropyle or the entry of the pollen tube through the chalaza is called as a chalazogamy or the entry of the pollen tube through the integuments is called as the mesogamy right but whether the pollen pollen tube is entering through the micropyle or entering through the integuments or entering through the chalaza pollen tube is attracted only by the synergids please remember pollen tube is attracted only by the synergids and pollen tube will always enter into the embryo sac through one of the synergids so whether it is uh, entering through the chalaza or whether it is entering through the integuments or the micropyle the final entry of the pollen tube inside the embryo sac will always occur through the synergies which are present at the micropylar end right so all the pollen tubes enter through the micropylar end only means they enter through the synergies right so as the two non motile male gametes are passed through the pollen tube we call it as the siphonogamy so what is a siphon siphon means the tube siphon meaning of siphon is a tube so two non motile male gametes are passed towards the female gamete through the tube through the siphon so we call it as the siphonogamy so siphonogamy is the transfer of non motile male gametes through the pollen tube so please remember all these concepts porogamy chalazogamy mesogamy and siphonogamy right so what is the double fertilization double fertilization is the characteristic feature of the angiosperm in which the first fertilization is called as the syngamy and this first fertilization uh, it result in the formation of the diploid zygote and second fertilization is uh, is the fertilization in which the polar nuclei are fertilized by one of the male gamete and it result in the formation of the primary endosperm nucleus which result in the formation of the triploid endosperm right so what is the significance of the double double fertilization double fertilization result in the formation of zygote and zygote develops into an embryo right so embryo it result in the formation of the plant right so significance of double fertilization is that it result in the formation of embryo embryo is going to develop into the plant second significance is that it result in the formation of the primary endosperm nucleus which later on develops into an endosperm and endosperm provide nutrition to the developing embryo so the chances of survival of the embryo are increased in angiosperms so seeds increases the survival rate of the plant or of the embryo due to the presence of the endosperm in them so please remember endosperm increases the chances of survival of embryo because it provides the nutrition to the embryo zygote also restores the diploid condition so one male gamete fertilizes another egg that is a female gamete both are haploid structure these two haploid structures come together and there is a they develop into the zygote so zygote restores the diploid condition right and here due to the double fertilization 
first result in the formation of the embryo second result in the formation of endosperm and many embryo are not formed inside the embryo sac so prevention of formation of different embryos occurs due to the double fertilization so double fertilization avoid the polyembryony polyembryony is a condition in which more than one or the two embryos are present inside the embryo sac right so only one embryo is present and as only one embryo is present the chances of the survival of the embryo and the uh, development of the vital plant uh, is occurred right so all these are the significances of the double fertilization let us study about the post fertilization changes post fertilization changes include the formation of the endosperm from the primary endosperm nucleus and the formation of the embryo from the zygote zygote is the product of the first fertilization or the syngamy zygote is a diploid cell this diploid cell it undergoes division to form the embryo while the primary endosperm nucleus is the product of the triple fusion in which one male gamete fuses with the two polar nuclei containing secondary nucleus so this primary endosperm nucleus is a triploid cell this triploid cell undergoes rapid divisions it undergoes mitotic divisions and it forms the endosperm so let us study about the development of endosperm endosperm provides nutrition to the embryo development of the endosperm and the embryo is a simultaneous process but most of the times the embryo development occurs after the development of the endosperm is started so the first development of endosperm occurs then the development of the embryo is started so let us study about the different type of endosperms there are around 3 types of endosperms which are generally observed but some more types of endosperms are also observed in some plants so let us study about the first type of the endosperm the first most common type of endosperm is called as the nuclear type of endosperm this type of endosperm formation is observed in around 161 angiospermic families in nuclear type of endosperm the primary endosperm nucleus which is a triploid nucleus undergoes nuclear division so this primary endosperm nucleus undergoes repeated nuclear division this nuclear division is not followed by the wall formation around them so please remember in the nuclear division only the nucleus of the primary endosperm nucleus undergoes repeated divisions and due to the formation of the central vacuole so in the middle a large central vacuole is formed this large central vacuole it pushes these nuclei to the periphery so when it pushes these nuclei to the periphery these nuclei are arranged in the peripheral region so here you can see this is a large vacuole and these nuclei are arranged in the peripheral region so this type of division is called as a free nuclear division it is a most common type of uh, endosperm formation in the angiosperm and it is observed in around 161 families of the angiosperm the example of this free nuclear division type is the coconut water so coconut water is having many nuclei in it and these nuclei are representing the free nuclear type of division but sometimes these nuclei they later on means at the end they form the wall around them so when when they form the wall around them these nuclei they form the cellular structure and a multicellular type of structure is formed so nuclear division or nuclear type of endosperm later on can develop into the multicellular structures but in some plants like in sunflower or in case of the coconut 
this development of the wall is incomplete so in case of the coconut we can see that the coconut water is present inside and this coconut water is surrounded by the white colored part this white colored part is uh, is considered as the cellular endosperm so it is representing the cellular endosperm white part of the coconut is representing the cellular part of the nuclear type of endosperm while the innermost part is representing the nuclear type of endosperm okay so the nuclear type of endosperm is the endosperm in which the primary endosperm nucleus undergoes repeated divisions due to the formation of the large central vacuole these nuclei are pushed towards the periphery and these nuclei later on form the wall around them and the cellular type of endosperm is formed from them and this type of endosperm is called as the nuclear endosperm so please remember in the nuclear endosperm only the division of nucleus occur and it is not immediately followed by the wall formation right so next type of the endosperm is called as the cellular type of endosperm in the cellular type of endosperm the primary endosperm nucleus which is present inside the embryo sac this primary endosperm nucleus it undergoes division so it undergoes the division uh, by the mito by the mitosis and it is immediately followed by the wall formation around them right so it is like the division of a cell so single cell of the primary endosperm nucleus undergoes division and when it undergoes division it forms the wall around them right so in this way many cells are formed and these many cells by the repeated division they fill all this embryo sac and this is called as the cellular type of endosperm so here you can see all the cells are formed from the primary endosperm nucleus and this type is called as the cellular type of endosperm in the cellular type of endosperm the primary endosperm nucleus division is followed by the wall formation so please remember the primary endosperm nucleus division is immediately followed by the wall formation in the cellular type of endosperm and it occurs around in the 72 families of the dicotyledonous plants so monocots and dicots all, all these are the angiosperms so around in 72 families of the dicots like balsam petunia and adoxa so all these are the different families they are representing the cellular type of endosperm next type of endosperm is called as the helobial type of endosperm helobial type of endosperm is observed in the monocotyledonous family like helobials right so it is formed in the helobi helobi series of the monocots these are mostly the grasses and uh, in the helobi types of the monocots the helobial type of endosperm is formed this endosperm is the intermediate type of endosperm means it is formed by both the processes both the processes means the nuclear as well as the cellular so how it occurs in the helobi type of helobial type of endosperm formation the primary endosperm nucleus it first undergoes the division so it undergoes division and one cell is form in the upper region and one cell is form in the lower region so primary endosperm nucleus undergoes division it is followed by the wall formation right so first wall formation occurs and it forms one cell at the chalazal end and one cell at the micropylar end so this is the embryo sac inside it the primary endosperm nucleus was present this nucleus has divided this in, uh, embryo sac into the two regions the upper the chalazal region and lower is the micropylar region the upper chalazal region has the smaller cell while the micropylar region has the larger cell so here you can see the chalazal cell and the micropylar cell this chalazal cell has a single nucleus and micropylar cell also has a single nucleus both of these uh, chalazal cell and micropylar cell now undergoes the nuclear division so please remember here first division was the cellular type and second division is the nuclear type means now this nucleus it will undergo the nuclear division like the free nuclear division right and when it undergoes the free nuclear division you can find that a large central vacuole is present in the middle and the central vacuole it pushes these nuclei to the periphery 
right so in this way you can find that the endosperm is formed and in this endosperm the large micropylar cell is present and one smaller chalazal cell is present right so this type of the endosperm formation is the characteristic of the halo b series of the monocots and it is called as the halo bial type of endosperm and so uh, this type of endosperm is the intermediate type of endosperm which is formed by both the cellular and the nuclear type of endosperm right so first division is the cellular and later on all the divisions are the nuclear divisions so example of this halo b series of the plants is aspodelus so aspodelus please remember the example is aspodelus so all these three types of endosperms are normally observed in the angiospermic plants one more type of endosperm is observed that is called as the mosaic type of endosperm so what is a mosaic type of endosperm mosaic type of endosperm is the endosperm which contain the tissues of two different types when the endosperm contain the tissues of two different types tissues of two different types means the tissues of the endosperms are not showing the uniformity normally the cells of the endosperm all the types of endosperm they have the cells which are isodiametric in their shape and they store the starch proteins or the oil granules in them please remember these cells store starch or oils or the proteins in them right but in the mosaic type of endosperm the tissues are not uniform tissues are of the two different types the example of this mosaic type of endosperm is the corn so in the corn we can observe the outermost is the layer is the seed coat inside the seed coat the endosperm is present and the middle region is representing an embryo so this middle region is representing an embryo right so outside the embryo the region of the endosperm is present and in corn we can observe that the outermost region is normally yellowish in color and inner region of the endosperm is whitish in color this outermost region is rich in the starch while the innermost region is rich in the sugary secretions right so this middle region of the cornet um, is sweet in taste right so outermost region is starchy inner region is sugary so here the two types of color patches are observed outer is yellow colored patches inner is slightly pale yellow colored patch is observed so the two types of the tissues are observed or the two types of the color patches are observed or the uniformity of the tissues is not observed so this is like a mosaic pattern so it is a sort of mosaic pattern which is observed in the corn so this is called as the mosaic type of endosperm so these are the four different type of endosperms one more type Uh, is asked sometimes in the neat exam that is called as the perisperm so please remember what is perisperm so perisperm is the nucellus so here we have studied that this is the embryo sac inside the embryo sac the primary endosperm nucleus is present this primary endosperm nucleus undergoes division to form the endosperm so normally the endosperm is formed inside the embryo sac suppose this is the embryo sac here the embryo is present and all these cells are representing all other cells are representing the endosperm so along with the endosperm sometimes the nucellus is also carried with the embryo so along with the embryo the nucellus is also carried and this nucellus is carried in the form of the cap of the embryo right so when the nucellus is present along with the embryo nucellus is called as the main central bulk of an ovule we have studied about the structure of an ovule inside the ovule we can observe that the nucellus is present right so these are the integuments if you remember these these are integuments this is the nucellus this is the embryo sac right inside the embryo sac the endosperm is formed this upper part of nucellus if it is carried along with the embryo if it is carried along with the embryo or the part of the nucellus is carried along with the embryo upper or lower part of the nucellus is carried along with the embryo then it is called as the perisperm so please remember the part of the nucellus is carried along with the embryo then it is called as the perisperm and this part of the nucellus it provides nutrition to the embryo then it is called as the perisperm so perisperm is also the kind of endosperm 
So please remember, perisperm is also the kind of endosperm in which the new cellus it provides the nutrition to the embryo, right? So just now we have discussed the five different types, but the three different types are very important. The first is the nuclear type, that is the most common type of the endosperm. Second is the cellular type. Third is the helobial type. Helobial type is observed only in the helobi series of the monocots. Mosaic type that is observed in case of the corn and the perisperm in which the nucellus provides the nutrition to the embryo.